everybody, welcome to episode 14 of All About African Violets. All About African Violets is musically sponsored by Ted Yoder. You can hear and purchase his great music on his website or on iTunes. His website is tedyoder.com. How are you guys? Gosh, I hope you've had a great week. I, uh, I have a new do. I'm trying out a new look. I don't know. I, I kind of like it. We'll see. Uh, I just w had my hair cut today, so it's kind of fun to try something new. Uh, I talked about that last week, you know, kind of changing things up every now and, and again. But uh, as you know, I had a crazy schedule last week. I was down in Missouri, in Neosho, Missouri, teaching a knitting class at an event called Fiber Days. And uh, it, it was great. I, I had to get the bail money ready because I did buy some fiber and I'll, I'll show it to you later. But we've got a lot to talk about this week. It's the, the, last, uh, the last weekend of the month, so that makes it kind of officially question day. Even though I, I try to answer questions for you guys, you know, th every week, uh, I certainly have a bunch here. And in fact, hang on for just a moment because I sat down without my glasses. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry. I got them. They're right here. I need to put them on because I need to look at my show notes so I know what I want to talk to you about today. Um, I actually have these too far over. I didn't get set up very well here today. What's up with that? Here, let me move that over. Um, okay, I, I had some great comments. I'm glad you guys enjoyed hearing some more of Ted's music. I will... Um, I will definitely be changing that up. Just wait till Christmas because he has some amazing Christmas music. And as I mentioned, it's kind of question day. So I've got a lot of questions that I'm going to answer for you that you guys have left me either on the website or um, on Ravelry uh, or, you know, let me know that you've had a question some way. And also I wanted to say welcome and thank you. I have uh, we have a lot of new viewers this week. A lot of people um, have seen the podcast in countries. This last week that you know added to the list that i mentioned to you guys uh, you know about a month or so ago it's so awesome to me that people on the other side of the world are watching and learning about these great plants that we love and i i just looked at the stats before i sat down and in this last week people in korea thailand denmark india the philippines and mexico so welcome you guys i'm glad you're watching and please tell your friends and i hope you'll continue watching we'll be back next week to watch again um okay i got a quick there was a question in the ravelry group ravelry is the online knitting and crocheting community and somebody was talking there about rooting leaves in water and this is what people used to do a lot they would you can you know when you make your cut on the leaf you can put it in a glass of water and, and it will root. A lot of people um, put tin foil over the top of a cup and then make a hole in the tin foil so the leaf is suspended there. It's not touching the side of the glass ever. Um, and it will it will create water roots. Okay, there goes the train, of course. Late in the day here, a train. Um, what are you gonna do? Uh, but I, you know, I, I tried this initially when I first started to grow plants and I read that a lot of people don't bother to do this anymore that there was something about the the roots that were that are formed in that way are called water roots and that they weren't very stable once you put the leaf into potting mix but i wanted to be sure so i of course asked my friend joyce stork who is an expert and she says she emailed me and she said we also skip the water step when rooting leaves water roots are regular roots but they are swollen with water when they get put in soil they seem to be very vulnerable to breakage because they are stiff and swollen and they dehydrate both of which leads to root collapse normally a fresh set of roots will then develop in about two weeks time and it will take off but that's two weeks of wasted time so i hope that that answers your question about that and uh you can skip that step. I, I don't even use a special rooting medium anymore. I just use the same potting mix that my plants are eventually going to be growing in. That's what I use to start leaves as well. So then Lori in Maine um, said that she is also growing some violets in self-watering pots. And she asked me what fertilizer I'm using on the big box violet. Well, Lori, I'm not using fertilizer on it. I'm using um, the uh, commercial potting mix that already has fertilizer in it. And it's, a, it's one that says that that fertilizer, 
fertilizer should last for about six months and a standard African violet likes to be repotted at least every six months. So I'm not fertilizing in addition to that at all. I'm just letting it use the fertilizer that's time released that's supposed to last all this time in, in that mix. That's what I'm using in the big box violet. So if you are using, um, if you are not using a mix that has fertilizer in it, that's a really good question. And I will, I will, ask, I will ask about that because I don't know. I would, I would guess that you could use your water that has fertilizer in it, that it should go through the, uh, the porous part of the pot, but, um, but I will find out and I'll let you know. Then, okay, wait, I've really turned into my mom here. I've got to put my glasses on again. Oh, and Lori also asked if I, if she should let the reservoir go dry. I have not. I have let it keep, uh, I have kept it wet in there. I've added water about every 10 days. It seems to be low and I've added some more. And wait till you see the plant today, you guys. It looks so great. Well, you can see it behind me there right now, kind of. But wait till you see it on the look on the stands. It's great. I'm so excited about it. And then um, I did have a couple of people ask more questions about light. And if you, if you guys, if you haven't seen episode seven yet of the podcast, you might want to go and, and grab that one. We talked about the beginning, um, some beginning information about light on that one. And if you have additional questions about it, then please um, feel free to ask me. Um, I know um, I also had a question about uh, my plant stands and yes the stands that I use I got at, I think I mentioned this on episode 7 as well but they are from indoor garden supply um, gardening supply it is in uh, Michigan and those guys are always at national every year and I love their light I use a compact light cart they are spendy guys they do they, they do cost a lot and you don't have to spend that much money you can get a shop light and start that way uh, there are plenty of ways that are lower cost until you really decide if this hobby is for you and you really feel like, oh, I've really got to have some good stands. And then, you know, check Craigslist, check eBay. You never know what you might find for sale in your area that, uh, that could help you in your violet growing career. Now, I had another quest a question, and this one I think is really important. This was from Gabriel Kim. And she left this on the website. She says, I'm still not completely sure about symmetry. Gabrielle Kim, a lot of people aren't sure about symmetry. Sometimes I'm not sure about symmetry. She says, I have the African violet variety called Katya, and I do take off old leaves, but the symmetry seems off no matter what I do. Do you look and see if leaves fill in gaps and if some newer leaves overlap the other, the other older leaves? Do you get rid of the older leaves? Are there occasions where you might remove some young leaves, not near the crown, but in the middle layers? These are really, really good questions, um, Gabrielle Kim. And I, I wanna tell you that you have stumbled on a great truth because there are some violets that just never shape up. They just don't have good symmetry. And this is um, this harks back to um, when John Reagan asked me, uh, this is, probably a month or more ago now, he said, Annie, how do you decide what plants you want to grow for show? And, and I've mentioned before that I'm not often seduced by a, you know, a beautiful blossom because I'm looking at the foliage. And this is something that just comes with time. The more plants you grow, the more experience you will have, you will see what grows well for you in your conditions. If you're not growing for show, it doesn't really matter if the plant, you know, is not perfect, doesn't have perfect symmetry. But if you are growing for show, then that's what you really want to look for. You want to be, when you, when you are at a show, look and see what plants are there and what has that beautiful shape that you really are looking for. I have found that there are a number of plants that just grow themselves. For me i don't have to fool around with them um rob's antique rose is one rob's little pueblo i know petal pusher said now that they're they are looking petal pusher i don't know if you're a man or a woman so i keep using they but uh, that they're looking now for rob's little pueblo that's one of the um the violets that you see in the opening sequence of the podcast 
it grows really well. It has really good symmetry. I personally have found that a lot of Kent Storks plants have awesome symmetry. He, he and his plants grow well for me in, the, in my climate, in my growing conditions. So it's, it's really, um, it's a hard lesson when you find a plant that you think, oh, I love this blossom and I'm gonna grow it for show and, and then it just never shapes up. It just won't grow that way. And you know, this again, this comes with time and the more plants that you grow and different varieties that you try, um, you will find that you will begin to develop your own favorites, the things that grow well for you and your conditions. And, uh, and that's kind of how it goes. With your question about, about removing leaves, sometimes maybe nearer the crown, yes, I have done that. Because when you re remove, like if you've got a wonky leaf that looks like it's gonna twist or, and it's just, just coming out in the beginning um, near the crown, take it off, take it off. The other leaves will fill in very quickly. They will fill in that gap, uh, much more so there uh, in new growth than they will in an older leaf where you, where you may leave a, a larger gap. Again, and part of this um, is working with the plant, which it sounds like you've done with Katya. And the more, you know, grooming, beginning to groom immediately, um, as, as you are, as the plant is growing, it's, you know, even as a, as a young plantlet, once you've potted it up and it's on its merry way, really um, be aware, take a look. As I've said before, one of the things that I learned from Dorothy Kosowski in Southern California, she always has said that the difference between a good grower and a champion grower is that a champion grower checks their plants every day. And even, and I know I'm, I'm repeating myself, even if that is just a walk by the stands in the morning and going, oh, this one needs a turn and oh, let me look at that. And oh, that leaf could go, let me take that right now. Sometimes it's as simple as that. It's not always a, a, a repotting, a brand new thing every time you look at them. It's just that quick look and that taking care every, every day that gives them the best opportunity to grow really well. So I hope that that, um, that that really helps. Grooming is so important. I I did some more this week. I was a little nervous about, um, about blossom count for my plants, as you saw last week. So that's, let's go on to tips and treasures, and I'll we'll talk a little bit more about that, because I um, one of the things that I did this week, I thought uh, maybe I should take a blossom off, particularly off of Rob's Antique Rose, but I thought, no, it's really close now. I'm too close to show to take one off and, and think, mm, what if another one doesn't grow? So I spoke with my friend Joyce Stork, and I looked in, her, in their book, um, You Can Grow African Violets, her, her and Kent, hers and Kent's book, and I didn't find this, and it could be that I just wasn't looking in the right section, so I'm going to ask her about it again. But she recommends something where other plants on the shelf, like as you, you will see when you see the look on the stands, because it, this obviously worked, because everything is looking really good. I'm really excited, I can't wait for you to see them. Um, if you take some leaves off of other plants that are on the shelf, that plant will release kind of a little, she calls it like a puff of gas, and I think she calls it ethylene, but I'm not sure. But what that does is it stimulates all the other plants on the shelf to grow and blossom or you know, to keep moving forward. And uh, I feel, I'm, I'm feeling like I've got four plants that can go uh, to Tulsa next week. So um, I'm still crossing my fingers, but I am, I am working on that. And so I'm, I, I can't wait for you to see them when we take a look at what's on the stands. But also on tips and treasures, um, I was asked about, um, I wanted to, well, actually I wasn't asked this, but I wanted to tell you one of the things I'm going to look for when I am in Tulsa at the Missouri Valley African Violet Council's show next week is I'm going to try to see, well, I'm going to see if there is a plant there that has a girl leaf that grows with that girl leaf. Girl leaves are plants, I mean, I have grown them. I'm not growing any right now. The one that I mentioned that seemed to be similar to a girl leaf was blueberry sprite. And I have to tell you, the symmetry on blueberry sprite, I'm not too excited about. I will be taking it to show. I'm going to do the best I can with it. But even though I like the blossom a lot on this plant, it is not likely that I will continue to grow it. Um, 
as a senior judge, I am required to grow um, 50 varieties, uh, at least half of which must be registered varieties. So I do have somewhat limited shelf space and I do like to grow standards. So I don't, um, I don't give up shelf space easily. If a plant is not going to grow well in my conditions for me, then I usually will give it, you know, I'll give it the old college try and actually I'll give it more than one chance to shape up. But if it doesn't, I won't keep it or if it doesn't bloom true, there's no point in me keeping it because then taking it to show if it's not blooming according to its, its registered description, then I will, I will lose points on it. So, um, but that's me. You know, everyone, not everybody grows, as we've I've, I've, I've said before, not everybody grows for show. So, um, you know, if a plant is growing and you love it, it's beautiful and you're happy with it, then keep it. And it should make you happy. It's great. Um, I'm also going to look for different types of blossoms when I'm at the show to, to be able to share some with you and maybe do something like what I did last week where I had just the, the, the photo and spoke um, through, I had a, you should have seen me, I had this big headset on, this big microphone, trying to get that all set up. And I, again, I do know that the sound wasn't great, but I'm still learning with that particular piece and uh, I do hope to use it again. So we'll see how it goes. But I will look for the different types of leaves and I will look for some of the different types of blossoms to share that with you. And, uh, and hopefully over, you know, probably not all next week because I'm, I'm very hopeful to have some live footage to share with you. And uh, I will be able hopefully to, uh, well, I know for sure for, for a few people that um, have already consented to sit down with me and be interviewed for the podcast. So I'm excited for that. I'm excited to share that with you in the coming weeks. It won't happen all at once, but it'll happen over, you know, a period of weeks as we move into the winter. And speaking of the winter, I wanted to give you a tip today because as of today, and this is Saturday night when I'm doing this, but you'll see it tomorrow on Sunday when I upload it. And that is about 12 weeks out from Christmas. Can you believe it's only 12 weeks to Christmas? Ah! But one of the things that I do sometimes if I'm not, if I know, if I don't have a show that's coming up in the spring or something, or I will choose certain plants and allow them, or if you're having a holiday party right around Christmas time, I will, um, I used to keep, you know, in the, the plant stand here in the sunroom, I would always keep a number of plants um, if I was, particularly if I was having a holiday gathering, and I will let them come into bloom for Christmas. And it's so beautiful. You have these beautiful colors of blossoms at Christmas time. It's kind of like having a, a live Christmas tree, you know, except it's on a stand, you know, different shelves. But a lot of people are very interested to see that. So if you have, guests in your home over the holiday season and you have a, a plant stand and you do have plants that are in bloom at that time, um, it's you'll probably end up sending them home with leaves or or little plantlets in a in something that will keep the plant warm and not, it won't get cold as, during the transfer. You'll have new converts and uh, people growing plants that you know. So it is time now to take a look at what's on the stands. And I hope you enjoy it because I sure did. I mean, the plants for show, I'm, I'm pleased, I'm excited now. I was a little nervous last week, but I'm very excited now. In fact, I'm one of the things I'm going to do on the rest of the weekend, this weekend, and I will try to film this for you, is I'm going to get my little carrying case because I'm taking these plants on a plane to go to Oklahoma where the wind comes sweeping down the plane. So. I, uh, I will get that ready and I will share how I do that. I learned this from Kathy Lati. She is a, a champion grower. Um, she wins at national all the time and she, uh, she brings plant, plants on the plane in a little plastic carry box. So that's what I'm, gonna, I'm going to attempt to do. But uh, take a look and I will see you shortly. Oh, wait till you see, oh, I already told you this, but wait till you see the big box violet close up. And it looks like jungle land on the, on the dome trays. Everything is just going crazy. So I'll see you on the other side. Hi everybody, it's time to take a look at what's on the stands. And wow, take a look. Here's Western Moon. Now I am having to be a little more careful today because, and pardon me, my guest room is kind of a mess because I was traveling, as you know. But here 
Western Moon is looking just great. I'm very excited about it. Wow, I spilled the water out of the reservoir. Yikes. And here is Rob's Antique Rose looking much, much better than it did last week. It's still got some blossoms to open and I'm hoping that they will. And here is Blueberry Sprite. And it's looking pretty good. I had to take a couple of spent blossoms off of this one. As you know, it's been blooming for a while. And I did take another leaf or two off. This plant does not have great symmetry, but I, I am hopeful that I can at least get it to show and uh, that it'll be all right. And over here is Pink Pussycat. And I would like really love for it to bloom a little more freely, so I'm very hopeful that it will start picking up the pace here this last week. But there's something here, and I don't know if, can you see it? Looks to me like that's a sucker. And this is not uncommon when, when you're this close to show, and I've been forcing these plants to bloom on my schedule. And there's another one under there, and I'm not sure you can see it, but this one you can. That little petal kind of right in there I will be checking that very closely because if it is a sucker it must be removed or my plant will not be judged and that would be bad well and you can see uh, that I uh, since I spilled some of the water that these are on reservoirs and you can also see a few leaves that I groomed off a few of the of the plants that are not going to show in an effort to uh, assist with the blooming Joyce Stork um, talks about this. She's talked about it to me. I was trying to find it in her book, in their book, but I couldn't find it, and I'm going to have to ask her if it's in there, about um, taking a leaf will release like a little puff of, of like a ethylene, I think she said, type of gas that encourages everything else around it to bloom. So I took some leaves from here and some from the ones over on the back reservoir and uh, in, in the hope that it would help everybody else on the stand to bloom a little better, the four show hopefuls. And it seems to be working, so I'm kind of, ex I'm really excited now, and now I'm trying to not slip in the water that I spilled. But uh, these smaller reservoirs I use for the smaller pots. They're not my favorite reservoir, but they are available, I believe, from the Violet Showcase is where I got them. The ones that I really like to use are these, and uh, but they're better with at least a three inch pot, which is what Western Moon is in. Um, I like them. They are old. They were from Volkman's, which does not, which no longer exists. You may be able to find some of these on eBay if you look around or something similar. But I like them because that water is open, so it's creating a very moist atmosphere. And when you have a number of plants on the shelf that way, it, it adds moisture and humidity to your growing environment. Okay, let's go take a look out in the sunroom. Guys, here is the uh, the tray with the relatively new leaves. This is kind of like a flashback for those of you who have been watching since the beginning. That's what they look like initially. And uh, here we go, up on the top here. Now it's like a jungle in this dome. Boy, it's just great. Uh, everything is looking really good. And even these leaves right in the very front, the ones that I put down you know, right at the end of July, they are looking really good as well. In fact, remember the one, I, the pink champagne that I pulled out the other day? Take a look at that. Looking wonderful just in this period of time. So this, this uh, tray also looking really good. Lots of things happening there. And down here, let's go over and take a quick look. These are the trailers, the ones I kept in plant form and everybody's looking pretty good here too you can see ooh, good knock them over eh? you can see that this one is starting the crown variegation you see how it looks kind of yellow in the crown this is cherokee trail i believe yeah and that's the beginning of its variegation coming there this one is uh sushi it's called sushi take it where you can see it and it's getting ready to bloom and i will let it bloom to uh, till i see that it blooms true to its description. But everybody else is looking pretty good over here. Let's go take a look at the big, bo big box violet. Wow, look at it. 
it's blooming it's got a ton of blossom over here that other little bloom stalk that was coming up the other day is up and blooming this plant is growing i mean if you go back and look at some of the at some of the footage that i shot of it when we first potted it into this pot and and look at it now boy you can really tell that it's doing well i'm very excited about it i'll be right back what did you think isn't it exciting i mean all these weeks have gone by and now these plants are blooming and they are getting ready to go to show i, I just i get it's so exciting to me i love to go to show it's, you know, I mean, get the bail money ready because I love to go to show. It's going to be very challenging for me to not come home with some plants or, well, probably some leaves. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, there may be an old favorite there or something that I might want to maybe pull back into my collection. And since I don't think that Blueberry Sprite is going to be staying with me after this show, then uh, I feel like I could maybe at least have one and not feel too guilty about bringing them home. But uh, I'm, I was just so excited to show it to you. And how about the pig box violet? I am really excited. Um, you know, for those of you who do grow in self-watering pots, you know, as I mentioned early on, I have never grown a violet in a self-watering pot before. And it's just so exciting for me to see it and look at it week to week with all of you and see that it's growing and it's blooming and it's in natural light. It's not blooming to the extent that the show plants are that are that have been coached and groomed and cosseted and petted and taken good care of for the last 12 weeks, but it's growing and it's beautiful. It would be a gorgeous and happy addition to anybody's growing environment in their plant room, in their kitchen, wherever, wherever you like to have a beautiful piece of green and some beautiful color. So, well, get the bail money ready this week is really all, for me, all about Missouri Valley. I'm so excited to be going. I will get to see so many people there, and there will be a lot of people who are on the executive committee of the African Violet Society of America. Um, these are the movers and shakers, you know, uh, the, the big wigs that are going to be there. And I'm very hopeful to get some of them to sit down. Hopefully, I mean, I'm crossing my fingers. They could tell me no, but I, I hope that maybe at least a few of them will sit down uh, with me and I will um, and share, you know, they'll be able to share the parts of their story with you. How they got started growing violets, why they grow them, what is it about them that, that was so engaging. And although I think a lot of you, particularly if you are a newer grower, I've had a, at least one comment, actually a few, from people who were, have said already um, on the website, they've said that they were a new grower and they're hooked now. They're so excited, that's how it happens. You get one and it's like, wow, this one's doing really well. I think I could get another one or maybe you had five and now you have 10. I mean, this is how it starts, guys. So do be careful. Remember what we talked about early on. Limit your collection to what you can comfortably care for and take good care of. That's always something to keep in mind. I just will, um, wanna repeat the info for you on, um, here, I'm just gonna make this, well, no, I'll just put my glasses on. Hmm. The theme of the show at Missouri Valley is Violets for All Seasons. It will be held on October 5th, 6th, and 7th at the Wyndham Tulsa Hotel in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The showroom will be open to the general public from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday, which I believe is the 6th of October. So let me say also that if you are if you're going to the show, please look for me. I, I won't know what you look like probably, but you see me every week and so you'll recognize me hopefully. I'm the tall curvy redhead. And uh, so if you're there, please introduce yourself to me. I would love to meet you. Okay, and I guess it's time to keep moving forward folks. Um, I wanna show you some of the fiber that I got. So hang on for just a moment and I'll be right back. I'm back. Well, I had a really great time in Neosho, Missouri. The uh, Southwest 
uh, the Fiber Folks of Southwest Missouri is a guild, um, a knitting and spinning and weaving guild of uh, very interesting people. And uh, they kind of adopted me. I crashed one of their events once. A, a, a great teacher was here from, New, from uh, New Zealand and Field. And I drove all the way to Lamar, Missouri, the home of uh, where uh, President Harry Truman was born. That's its claim to fame, believe me. It's a teeny weeny tiny, teeny weeny town in Missouri. And uh, you know these people, the, um, these women in the skill, they are just so talented and so willing to share their knowledge. I just love that. And so I'm a member, I'm an actual member of the guild. And one of the things, I, I didn't come home with any yarn, but I did come home with some fiber. And this is Wensleydale. That's a Wensleydale is a type of sheep. And this is Wensleydale roving, which means this is the type of the way it's processed. And up this little section is for my friends who are knitters and spinners, because there are some who, um, who do watch the podcast. So occasionally I gotta get a little fiber and a little yarn in here. But this braid is also Wensleydale. And it's Wensleydale top. That's a different preparation. And I happen, it's a long wool. I happen to love spinning Wensleydale and I've made some really cool things. And this is a beautiful fiber. And it's, it's blue face, blue faced Lester is the name of the sheep. And uh, in, the, in the vernacular, we call that BFL, <laughs> blue faced Lester. And this is a blend with blue faced Lester and silk. And I only bought an ounce of it just to play with. And it's same with the, the Wensleydale, just an ounce of each, and uh, black and white. So um, I had a great time. Spinning is one of those, it's kind of like working with my plants. It has that great feeling of zen, of relaxation, of creating something with my hands and, and really just enjoying that so much. So I hope that you have something this week that you really enjoy doing, whether it's with your plants or with another hobby you have. I've got another train. I don't know what's going on. Trains seem to be popular tonight, Saturday night. Woohoo, trains. <laughs> I, um, I really, I really want to thank all of you. We've, we're up to, oh boy, this is a loud train. This must be a heavy freight. I'm sorry. <laughs> we're up to 60 likes on, on, on uh, the Facebook page for All About African Violets. That is just so wonderful. Thank you all. And please keep telling your friends. It's just really exciting that there are, you know, like last week it was, it just rolled over to 50 and I was so thrilled. And then this week, we got a bunch more and 10 more likes and lots of people checking things out. So people from other countries on the website watching the podcast. So thank you all. Thank you all very much. Well, I hope your week is filled with all the things you love. And I hope that you have great days and good growing. And I will see you hopefully next week and in with some great footage from the Missouri Valley African Violet Council show in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Again, good growing. I'll see you next time.